Now, if you want to play with dates, dates are always actually the most annoying thing um, about Firebase for me. So joined at, what's it, student dot joined at. Now, if you do something like this, you'll get, let's see, objects are not a valid react child found object with keys seconds nanoseconds so if i try to do like dot seconds it'll give me the number of seconds right <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense does it i joined at one four two five three three zero 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 well i got i got timestamp and then in parentheses seconds equals this ah interesting this. very interesting um did you turn it into a string yes like this yeah if you stringify it that's actually what you will get you'll get something like this right is that what you got yeah cool now another thing you can do is you can just call the to date method on it. So you can say dot to date. And I think that actually works the best, right? Uh, found, okay. Let's see. Objects are not valid. Found Monday. I think yep. then it's the dot to string, something like that. I think that should actually give you the correct one. There you go. And there's the actual JavaScript date object. Student dot joined at to date to string. That's kind of annoying, but if you want to mess with timestamps, that's the proper way to do it. What um, is it even showing in seconds? Like? That's literally the seconds since 1970, January 1st, or something like that. Yeah, this which is 49 years. Yeah, exactly. And so that's it's it starts from January 1st, 1970. I actually don't remember the exact reason for that, though I did look it up one time. Do you know? It's a Linux thing? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's just when they started. Ah. Uh, yeah, there, there's some reason for it, but that is, it's January 1st, 1970, if I'm not mistaken, is when those seconds start. So if you were to do this and not do to string and just say dot seconds, that's what you'll get. You'll get the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970 to the exact date you had right there. Now, that is not that useful. It's correct? It's Unix. Unix epoch time. There you go. Um, so I just do this to date dot to string, and then I get the actual date. It's the JavaScript date object. So it's Monday, March second, two thousand fifteen, and then I can just get the appropriate data from that. Something wrong with yours? Let me check it out. If we want to add a new student to our database, how do we go about doing that? Well, we can just make a class method here. What'd you say? We just, don't. we just don't? No. No new friends. Only only our class for life. But if, say if we did want to add a new student, we would come down here and make a new method. Let's call this add new student. And this add new student method is going to add a new student to the database. Now say for instance I wanted to and now this is a little confusing because when you add a new student you use something very similar to this db.collection students so we would say db.collection students and then if we want to add a new student all you have to do is say dot add and then you can put an object representing the student right there. Which is kind of cool, right? I guess. But the problem is like we're not taking in any information. We're not letting the user decide what information to put in there. We're just going to hard code it in. So we say things like name. The name of this new student would be Rachel, since she's not here anymore. And then her age would be, I think Rachel was 17, 16? Anyone know? She joined at, and we'll say new date. And then graduated, we'll say true. Since she's no longer with us, she has now graduated. Don't so, was that? You're right, we gotta give her some points. You're absolutely right. Points, she gets a million. So we add a new student here by simply passing in an object 
that has all the information about our new student. We say db.collectionofstudents add a new student. And that's literally all you have to do to get this to work. And does the database care if you left out or added a new field? So that's the interesting thing. The yeah. database actually doesn't care. We could only put this and the database would still store it. Yeah. So we could say, hey, just put the name Rachel in and the database would store it. However, when you get it back and you try to put all this information in there, it'll, it'll appear as nothing. And so that's kind of, that's why you want to make sure that these keys are the same. And so if we do this, we can then come down here and create a button. Let's create a button that will say, add new student. And we'll say on click equals this dot add new student. I want you to save this and I want you to run it and I want you to tell me what happens to your database when you do this. What we want to happen is when we click this button right here, this add new button, we should expect to see this document created in our Firebase database. We should expect to see it right here. So I'm going to go to the screen. I'm going to refresh this. Oh, it's already refreshed. Lovely. I'm going to click add new student. Click. Okay, nothing's happened. I don't see anything else here. Weird, I go back here. Oh, would you look at that? What do you notice here? Okay, okay. Ah, look at that, Rachel's in the database. Is this what we want? Yes, now question, why hasn't Rachel been updated here then? Can anyone tell me why they think Rachel hasn't been added to our app even though we just created a new thing? That's exactly right. This code only runs when the component mounts to the screen. So we're not telling it to go get the new data unless it remounts itself. Click refresh and check it out. What do you notice? Now we get Rachel. Do you see that? If yours isn't working, we can check that out later. But that is how you add data to a database like this. Now what I want you to do right now is I want you to create a form that allows the user to go in and write in an input in there. I wanna say, let's say, um, let's make a div here. And in there, create a paragraph where you have an input and this input should have a, should take in a name. We should have input for name, an input for age, an input for graduated, and an input for joined at, and an input for points. And I want you to go in and play around so that whenever the user submits, clicks this add new student button, whatever is typed in to these inputs is how you add a new student to the database. You'll have to go maybe go look at the React State Lab that we did the other day because it's going to go over how to do the different types of inputs and how to store them in state so that you can submit them to our database. So. Take a little while, maybe like a half hour, 